Well, uh, welcome to our talk. Uh, this is our talk uh, at the beginning. I'm Maximiliano Tabakman and Bruno Panelli. Uh, we work at Mercap, as it says there. And uh, this talk will be about uh, some tips, experience, reports, uh, and a lot of things related to recycling legacy applications. So for those of you who do not know Mercap and what we do, it's basically a company that develops uh, financial software. Okay, so we have products that are uh, sold and used by banks, hedge funds, and well, any company who wishes to uh, deal with their trades and the stock market and, and those kind of things. And they want like a, a system, a robust system that we uh, take care of that and we are using uh, relational databases for one of our products and Gemstone for the other. So just uh, there are a lot of people here who worked at Markup and used uh, Unitrade, that is the product that we'll be talking about. Just to be sure you're all here, will you please raise your hands if you touched Unitrade code, please? Okay, some there. Yeah, okay. Well, so maybe we'll talk about some things you, you know and some things uh, that will be new to you. Okay? No, no. No, Hernan was just the architect. He, he, he didn't make any wrong decisions here. So. Yeah, he left some. He, he, we still have some nice comments that he left in the code, where where he did things right. Uh, kind of, yeah. Uh, now, not, nothing. I, I think nothing of what we will be talking about and, and the ideas that we we applied uh, would be possible if not for the all the lessons that Hernan left us. So that's what everything that we are doing right. Uh, I think it's in, in part thanks to him. So thanks, Hernan. Um, okay, so first, um, Mercap is a software company, so a lot of things that happened to it when it started, started like 20 years ago, uh, may have happened to a lot of other companies. So let's review what tends to happen when you start a company with an idea for a project. So you say, okay, I have an idea. I'll set up a company and I'll develop software. It will allow tailoring of the of the different features. Uh, I will make sure it is robust enough so that it is always on and working. And I will also make sure that it's ready for change. So the system will be perfect and it will stay perfect forever. I just have to do that and I have an unbeatable application. So I think many of you may have heard of companies with, with those ideas. Okay, you just start, do that, easy. Okay, let's make some, okay. So you need a plan. Just, you need team building, okay? Build a team, choose the people, people you know who will work right, will be there for all of the duration of the project, then design the architecture with that, uh, that team and all the knowledge they have, perfect architecture, yeah? You schedule the development, uh, different stages, maybe you start with, I don't know, waterfall, because some years ago the, the agile ideas were, were still uh, growing, um, then you just need user testing, okay? You develop, and when it's finished, the user lets you know uh, the little details that you may have left out because obviously they were with you during the whole process. They, I mean, you have specifications from day one. That's why you could design the architecture. No problem there. And then the unforeseen, of course. You start with your project, uh, start working, but new technologies emerge. And then your client is, is one day asking you, why don't I have a web application? Everybody else is having one. Well, my software has like 15 years, it's robust, and no, no, I want web application. Okay. And then some developers leave because they start other projects, I know they retire or they find the, their, their own goals, and, and they left somehow, sometimes uh, things that maybe not, the whole, not all the team understood so far, and you have to like relearn that, because new developers will join, and sometimes you will have to train them, other times they will come with their own ideas, and in, in maybe you will find that they clash with some other ideas, maybe both were good, but one was already started, but you say, no, I, I know how I've been doing this in other company, okay, and also the, the budget and their schedules are not always what you expected. Okay, the prices change, or maybe you did not foresee some some spending that you had to do. The schedule may change. Maybe you forgot about, I don't know, the holidays. 
or maybe you didn't take into account uh, the, the time for, for some developers. Uh, and also a client will change specifications because let's face it, most of the time they do not know what they want until you give something that they know they do not want to use. And that, that, that's when development really starts, okay? So, well, that happens to a lot of companies, but then that's what you get, okay? You have like, I have the product, it works, it, I know, I wanted it to, to be able to hold things uh, and to move forward. Yeah, okay, but that's not what I expected. What happens is that, uh, well, eventually the, the customer will be okay with it and it will work. But there are a lot of things that when you look at the whole thing, say, okay, maybe this is not what I was expecting. So what we try to do, as any company might do, is give it time, okay, some different project customers come and go, and you get some stability. You fix the, the most important bugs, maybe first, and then you, you, you tackle other little things. You end up having a conformance to customers, customer specifications because eventually you understand what the client wants, the client understands what you can provide. You have optimized performance because you know the, the, the critical parts of the system that they are expecting and how to tune that. There's a well-known user interface because after some years, obviously, the developers will know how it works and the client, where the, all the customers will, will understand the, the basics of, of how to use the system. You have an experienced team. You start building documentation and you start learning from, um, from the different lessons in the different uh, sub-projects that you have. And also, you can build unit testing. Once you understand someone comes that no, you, you should have tests, okay, you start testing. Uh, you start doing test-driven development for all the new features, and the system uh, reaches some stability. That is somehow where Markup uh, was up to the point where a new, um, a new request came, and that's what Bruno will talk about and what we did about it. Some minor. Okay, as Maximiliano said, we, month, some months ago we received a new requirement. One of our main customers needs a new module that will be used all across the country and in all its branch offices simultaneously. Also, it will require that some of our existing interfaces will have to be redesigned, aiming for simplicity in order to speed up the data entry. And finally, just really small changes to the business models were going to be made. So, as Maximiliano said, time helps stability and robustness to settle on a system. However, it also brings problems such as code application, poor design solutions, and many, many other problems. So, Every new requirement gives us the opportunity to improve. We have to take advantage of this and revise our code, review it, and make it better. So, for instance, we got the opportunity to research about the latest technologies, rethink our interfaces, unify our product lines, set the foundation for future developments, reify missing concepts, and reapply good decisions. To sum up, we got the opportunity to take our 15-year-old product and recycle it, wash its face, maybe reorganize its content a bit, and bring it to the new decade. But why were these topics so important? Well, when a developer has to research and learn about new technologies in order to use it, they do so enthusiastically, so innovation motivates the team. Modern visuals attract customers, and our goal is to sell our product, so it's really important for us as developers to know and stay updated with the new UX and UI trends. When having two or more products, in, they are two in our case, but when two or more products share a common set of objects, Mutual improvement came when you work on any of them. Um, when establishing 
clear methodologies. The, the projects evolve faster and more in yes, in a more reliable way because they are founded, they are based in solid foundations. So that's well. This was really, really important for us because a month, month or two months ago, this new requirement arrived, and we based this new project on everything we, we've been developing in the last year. Well, well-designed objects, this is obvious from, I hope, all of you, but well-designed objects help transmit knowledge. And finally, when you reapply good decisions, you, you, you build trust. You trust the person who developed that solution and Oh, and that's it. You, you establish that solution as the, the valid way to, to, yes, to face that, that specific problem. But well, to, in order to take advantage of all these opportunities and still um, give, give our customer a great solution, we had some decisions to make. The first one, and I think it's the most important one, we decided that our new module will be web-based. This was totally new because the, our applications were, were, was 100% desktop. And it was, we decided to do this in order to ease this large-scale deployment I told you about. And we chose Seaside for developing this new module. We also needed multiple servers to handle the, the high concurrency problem. We already have this developed and we picked Apache as our load balancer and also for serving static files and providing secure communication. Then we, we decided it was time for us to, to redesign our persistency system. This product is 15 years old and it's not, it, it doesn't use Gemstone, it uses SQL servers, a relational database, and we, what we had at that moment was for each object, model object that needed to be persisted, we had another object that managed that persistency. They were called OMs or object managers. What we what we did what oh, sorry what we did was create a generalized way to do this persistency. Okay, and we called it the generic object manager. It's just a configurable object that knows how to store and retrieve an object from the relational database. And to complement this persistency system, we needed a way to create SQL queries. And it's, I, I don't know why we didn't have this. It's so obvious. We, we called it the query builder, and it does just that. It builds SQL queries just using Smalltalk. Then we, sorry, we reorganized uh, the system on using like modules and subsystems. And we built a system hierarchy where each class handles one specific problem. For example, we have our, our time system, our authorization system, we have a system for each financial unit, so, yeah, in order to distribute the, the responsibilities, you know. And finally, this little set of objects we needed to work with, well, we decided to, to redesign them too, but keeping the legacy ones for the existing functionality. We didn't, we didn't want to change the whole system, but make a little, a little upgrade still keeping the old system behind. So in the future, we, we can clean it. And well, we made these legacy adapters that 
are just that adapters that knows how to respond to the new objects protocol and translate it. Okay, so all of this was possible, all of this project was possible thanks to Seaside. Seaside was our, our key tool. It made us forget everything, everything about HTTP requests, HTML, some JavaScript libraries, um, what else, Ajax. We, we just focused on what we do best that it's programming small talk. We, we did have to reify some concepts. We did have to create objects for encaps encapsulating complex HTML like Maximiliano showed you yesterday. And we did um, import some JavaScript libraries just data, such as data tables, um, high charts, Bootstrap and many others, but all of this was really easy thanks to Seaside. It was possible and easy. Um, Seaside also gave us platform independence and in two ways. First of all, it's independent from the Smalltalk environment. We use BA Smalltalk, but for example, his, the, the example he showed you yesterday was created in Vis VisualWorks and ported to Faro. And also, as it was as oh, its result is web-based, we didn't have to worry at all about our customer's operating system, and that's really awesome. And finally, instant deployment. It, it's it's really fast. You just load the package into your into your small talk image. You deploy that package into our customer physical server, and you start seaside. That's all. Our new module was working. And well, here you have some screenshots. Um, I think you'll find it. It's, I think it's beautiful, and I would really buy it. Um, okay, now just take a look. It's it's modern, it's stylish, and it's really different from what we have. Here you have, for example, the table. Down there is data table, the select menu is another JS library, the hierarchical, it's it's called Dynatry, Dynatry JS. Um, well, just see for yourself, we have menus, it's I, I'm really proud of it. Really. Um, well now I don't know if you have any questions about it. Okay, Stefan. Uh, I have a question. So, you said yes, side is the key. Key tool. The key. Key, key, key. So, what are the key tools? What? I didn't get it. Sorry. Yeah. So, society is a good source. Right. This means that you could build the success of course, because you know, work hard. Lo más importante es lo tuyo. Okay, but well, uh, I think the, the different things that we could uh, provide to the community are the, the user interaction model, you know, the one I showed yesterday, but I, I told you, that's no problem, I will make it available. Uh, there's also some uh, implementation we had uh, in order to use um, high charts. Uh, you know, what high charts is, it's not free, but what we did, it's free for, for research. No, but not for 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 the company. So we, we bought a license for Hydrox, but we did a, an automatic importer of all the code. It, it checks the, the the API in in the web and it downloads it and it turns everything into small talk code. So that if you have Hydrox, you can write small talk, you know, and then build on top of that. that that's what we are doing. And also, we've added some 
some features to Data Tables plugin that's called uh, Raw Grouping. Uh, it, it, um, uh, we allowed it to, to have some totals and to to <coughs> specify functions for each of the subtotals and to, to be able to, to store data and do like math on the client. Uh, that was also like backported, not no, backported, sorry, uh, like given to, to the original author because Data Tables is it's free while well, you have to donate for and stuff like that. But it, we did not have to pay anything to get it to start trying it. So we, we also developed some improvements there. And, okay, but that, that's some of the things that we did. You should, you should send a mail into the CSI mailing list, for example. You see, if all the companies that are doing CSI, they would release one full widget, we would have a lot of full widgets. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of you know. Now we already have uh, a kind of all, uh, relational mapping. Okay, it, it's been okay. written, I think, before even Glorp started. Yeah, that, that's a problem. We did not have Glorp when we started, but now we, what we did was we took the chance to generalize some of the stuff so that it was easier to, to develop new things. But we also we already have like a lot of the system written with, with that just for some like compatibility layer for, for a new version of it. And also yeah, okay. yeah, so you say something about no. you say something about Gemstone. No, ge uh, our our other product uses Gemstone. Oh, yeah, the other one. The one we talked I think in every most other. in every other small talk. Yes. And then just uh, one more thing about Glorp. Um, I don't feel really, I, I really like what we did and I don't feel so comfortable using uh, a framework for persistence, for, for, for persistency. That's, that, that's it, just a matter of taste. <laughs> no more questions? Okay, thank you.